This is a production of Cornell University. Uh, today I'll present our recent work on microbial ion interaction uh, to control lignin decomposition in soil. Um, so, so basically this piece of work is to try to understand the mechanisms underlying the lignin decomposition. And um, what we did is we uh, analyzed a data sets, I published the data sets on the lignin decomposition. And uh, uh, we basically, we developed a so-called microbial ion interaction model, we call MIFI model, which uh, on the right side. And, uh, the model contains two major components. One is carbon dynamic, another is ion, ion uh, reactions. So from the right side figure, you can see this big, big solid black circle represent the macromolecule lignin, and which is interact with the react a reduced ion through so-called fentanyl reactions. And then the big uh, macromolecule lignin becomes smaller molecule lignin as indicated by gray smaller circle. And then those smaller uh, molecule lignin that can be utilized by microbe and then the microbe circulate generate a necroma necromass, which uh, together with a small mo uh, molecule lignin that can be you know, stabilized uh, to the ion uh, associated the carbon through so-called com complexation. So on the other hand, the, uh, the ion also change from reduced phase to oxid oxidized phase. And then this, uh, uh, oxidized phase and the, the, the uh, can, can, can sequester carbon and the through that uh, ion associate the organic matter. So that's basically the model we developed and uh, use that model to try to explain the observed pattern on, showed on, on the uh, left side. So our analysis basically draw the two conclusions. One is, uh, you know, mineral associated organic carbon actually is largely from plant derived carbon, at least uh, for this particular study. And the second is a lignin decomposition is uh, not driven by first order or metallous maintain kinetics, but are related to growth and the mortality of microbial populations and the community. The two conclusion actually has uh, contemporary uh, implications because uh, currently the, uh, the, the paradigm, paradigm uh, on the my, uh, soil organic dynamic is uh, shifting to, uh, towards the, the, the concept that mineral associated organic matter, it's currently most you know, proposed um, mostly derived from microbial residue. But uh, this study indicate that uh, at least for this uh, lignin decomposition, mostly derived the, uh, still from plant derived carbon. The second conclusion also is kind of has a contemporary uh, implications because uh, recently, a uh, huge effort has put into uh, on try to incorporate microbial process into earth system model. Those microbial process mainly based on the methylus maintain equation. And, uh, and uh, but here is basically we use the so-called data-driven approach to try to try to address those issues. So this paper recently published in a soil bi uh, biology and the biochemistry. So the whole project actually started in our, from our third 
uh, training course. My lab has, has been running a, a international training course on uh, new advances in land carbon cycle modeling since 2018. And to, you know, up to now, it's nearly uh, 500 attendees from 40, nearly 40 countries attended. On the third training course, in, that's in 2020, we had an attendee, that's Wen Juan, uh, Huang, um, for a research associate from Iowa State. She presented one data set. At that time, she got the, her paper you know, published by that time. And she showed that lignin CO2, uh, well, basically CO2 release from lignin, lignin decomposition. On the right side is a cumulative uh, CO2 release. On the right side, uh, side uh, showed the, the, the panel showed the rate of uh, uh, CO2 release from a lignin decomposition. Particularly on the right side, you can see the the CO2 release from lignin decomposition has, has a kind of a pattern, it's a non-linear pattern. This pattern is in major, is in big contrast with a typical so-called the first order kinetic decay uh, functions. And uh, my lab particularly interested in this those patterns because that's really related to, uh, to the biology of the decomposition process. And those biology potentially can be incorporated in the Earth system model. So since about probably nearly 20 years ago, my lab tried to kind of observe the patterns reported in the literature in the, from all kinds of studies. So, so my lab has synthesized the thousands of thousands of data sets to show the how, how little decomposition and, uh, occurs over time. And we synthesized about uh, you know, 2,000 data sets on little decomposition. Almost all of them showed this first order decay curve. And we also synthesized you know, more than 1,000 data sets on soil uh, organic carbon decomposition from, uh, from soil incubation studies. Almost all of them also you know, follow this kind of cumulative pattern, which also can be described by first order kinetics. And we also synthesized those soil carbon dynamic over time during the forest succession and also during you know, the cultivation and the vertical profile. So, so far my lab tried to synthesize all kinds of data we, 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 we can collect. Almost all of them follow the first order kinetics. And, uh, but recently there are a huge effort into, uh, into the incorporating the, the, the microbial process into the soil organic decomposition model. And my student, the Anish, recently is, uh, you know, just reviewed the microbial explicit model. And he found about 70 models, and especially those models, many of the models developed recently. Those models incorporate like microbial decomposition process, mineral interactions, microbial mortality and active or dormant my, uh, microbial uh, transitions. And also he showed that for these microbial decomposition, most of them use so-called mechanism-maintain kinetics. Some, some of them use the reverse mechanism-maintain kinetics and a few use the uh, equilibrium chemistry approximation. So majority of them use, use the, you know, non-linear McLeod-Menten kinetics or reverse the McLeod-Menten uh, kinetics. McLeod-Menten kinetics has intrinsic non-linear dynamic. And we, you know, uh, eight years ago, 
I organized a working group and one of the working group member, Yingping Wang, he developed a, 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 well, basically he analyzed the mathematical property of those meclus Menten equation. The Meclis, if a model has one or two meclus Menten equation to dominate the, uh, the decomposition process, and then this, you, then the mathematically we will see the so-called oscillated patterns, and these oscillated pattern indicate the basically due to the nonlinearity of uh, uh, nonlinearity in the meclis menten equation. So I have been trying to find the data sets to to support those uh, meclis menten equation for a long time. So when I saw the data sets presented by uh, Wen Juan Huang, and uh, during the workshop, I was so excited. So the data sets on the right side potentially can support this meclis menten equation. And because so far I haven't seen any data sets except this one, which uh, potentially can support the meclis menten equation. So then we, uh, we formed a so-called uh, uh, working group to work on that. The working group has you know, about uh, 12 members and uh, among them, yeah, Chai Jun Liao uh, led the model development and Wen Jun Huang, uh, she has original data and also has knowledge on little decomposition and both of them, uh, you know, let cool, cool, cool led the, 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 uh, the working group. And um, so during the process, I also learned about the ligand decomposition a lot, and from, uh, especially from Wen Jun Huang. You know, probably as you know, ligand, ligand is a big molecule, and the uh, old paradigm of soil organic matter dynamic is a, it's based on so-called the ligand dominated the soil organic matter and the bio, you know, biochemical recalcitrinase in the ligand, it's a, it's a determinant for the late stage of little decomposition and the form so-called organic matter. So this is a so-called humus, humus uh, uh, concept. You know, classical paradigm is a little decomposition and then selectively preserve those bigger, bigger molecule. And this, uh, this is a kind of a classic old paradigm. But, but the recently, you know, the more modern paradigm emphasized that the soil microbial process and the ligning, ligning um, is do, you know, does not persist in, in organic matter. So the biochemical recalcitrinase is a, it's a less important, but the microbial substrate use efficiency and then necromass become more important. So that's the, the concept, uh, the new, new concept. So that's those basically I learned a lot from uh, during the working group, from uh, especially from uh, uh, Wen Jun Huang and uh, and she she basically pointed out recent evidence of a hidden and a persistent ligning because of this uh, yeah this uh, this uh, oxidized uh, cupric uh, oxid oxidation oxid oxidation is underestimated the ligning content of uh, mineral soil. Lignin derivative preferentially associated with ion and uh, alumina minerals. So those uh, fate of uh, lignin in soil remain, uh, it's uh, undetermined. And also, you know, during the process, I learned a lot about the lignin decomposition, which required the ox uh, oxygen and, uh, and the, the ion linked react, uh, reactive uh, oxygen species can decay, uh, degrade the lignin through so-called uh, phaeton reactions. Those uh, short range the uh, ordered uh, ion faces the preferent, uh, 
preferentially protected. Basically, this kind of ion associate the organic matter. So ion play the dual, dual role in uh, lignin decomposition. So basically one is a stimulate, stim, stimulating the breakdown of uh, um, uh, macromolecule lignin into small molecule, but also this uh, oxidized uh, 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 ion protected the, the protected the small molecule lignin. So, so this uh, this issue is is particularly important in those well the wetland or it's a uh, highly saturated uh, the areas as oxygen fluctuate frac fluctuated in those tropical rainforest, the parkland or wetland. And then variability in oxygen in the bulk soil and the microsites may drive uh, uh, you know, ion re redox uh, cycling. So, so the crew, I mean, the lab she is, is Steve Hall uh, in Iowa State University. And they designed the experiment. They try to control the the amount of reduced ion in the soil by manipulating the, uh, the so-called an anaerobic period. So they used the, used the uh, lay, uh, isot isotope that labeled the synthetic lignin to trace the lignin decomposition. They applied anaerobic conditions at the beginning of the, 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 the study so they have four treatment. One is a control, which all have anaerobic, uh, uh, aerobic, uh, anaerobic condition. And then they have controlled the anaerobic uh, condition for four days, eight days, and 12 days. And then they, they by doing that, they, they created a different amount of uh, uh, reduce the ion and to see how that's influenced lignin decomposition, they use the soil incubation uh, approach to get the uh, experiment to do that. So these uh, results, uh, you already seen this, those are the results they observed from the experiment. You can see that um, the the zero day basically control has lowest, lowest uh, CO2 release rate. And the 12 days uh, treatment has the highest uh, CO2 release rate. This is because of uh, the highest, uh, uh, highest level of uh, uh, reduced uh, ion. So, so this, uh, as I mentioned, there is a pattern observed that the decomposition rate pattern uh, from a little a lignin decomposition is quite different from traditional first order kinetic decay decay pattern. So, so then we we developed a model which uh, we use the so called first order kinetics. We also use the the, the Michaelis maintain kinetics. And we also use the so-called logistic function. Logistic function, we developed that logistic function purely because of the data. So we use the Michaelis maintain equation, we use the first order and none of them can fit the data well. So then we try the different functions to, to, to see how we can best reproduce the observations. So end up, it end up logistic functions is the best of the best function to describe uh, the, the observed pattern. So here is the, the model we developed. We use the matrix uh, form to describe the, 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 the decomposition process. So dx over dt is the, is the, 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 the uh, X here means the carbon. And uh, so we use the two equations. One is to represent the microbial activity. Another equation to represent the how ion 
and uh, uh, interact with the carbon processes. So we also have an ion model at the bottom of this slice. So we use the so-called data, uh, data-driven approach. Data-driven approach is basically we use this, uh, use uh, the data to see, to, to select the best model, alternative model structure. And then once we, we select the best alternative structure, we use the data assimilation to estimate the, the parameter, you know, best, uh, best uh, likely, most likely hold as the parameter. And then we, uh, in this way, we, we try to see what the mechanisms underlying the little decomposition. So model structure is, a, is a to simulate a little decomposition process. Parameter estimate, estimation is to inform us how much parameter variance at the different pretreatment. And the model, we use the model prediction to evaluate the rule of a geochemical content and, uh, and the biochemical process in control lignin phase in the soil. Uh, so here is the estimated parameter for the different uh, process. So have uh, the, the top panel is for control, second panel is a four day, eight day and 12 days. And in this figure, you can see this, uh, if this, uh, you know, in each for the each of the parameter, if this uh, uh, shape is a long, that means the data didn't provide enough information to constrain them. If those uh, those uh, symbol is very very, uh, you know, have a small range, that that means the data have uh, more information to constrain those parameters. And uh, once we uh, constrain those parameters, we evaluate the, how well they fit. From this figure, you can see we have three type of model. The first one, uh, and let me see what's the color. The probably the blue, blue color is the first order kinetics. Greenish color is for Michaelis Menten equation. Red color is the, the MIFI model with the logistic equation. And uh, the, the dot, uh, dot with uh, the, these uh, in, indicated the data. So we have a four, uh, uh, four treatment, control four day, eight day, and a 12 day. You can see in the all treatment, those MIFI model with the logistic equation uh, fit the data best. And at the, at the bottom of the bottom, at the bottom that the table indicate all those statistics related to R square and the R, R MSE and the MAPE. So those are indicate the, the model fitting. So once we fit the model, we try to use the estimated parameter to understand the mechanisms uh, underline the uh, lignin decomposition. So our analysis indicate that differential CO2 production among the treatment, it's a primary ex can be uh, explained by variation the initial carbon and the ion pool sites, and also the carbon transfer rate and the microbial uptake rate. The initial value of uh, you know, reduce the ion increases with the anaerobic treatment, uh, duration of a treatment. And uh, that's consistent with uh, experimental observation. The greater initial value of a small molecule in the longer the anaerobic uh, pretreatment, and, uh, and that's basically result lead to the stronger ligning uh, Depolymerization. So here we show the phase of lignin carbon. You can see the macro uh, lignin carbon decline over the time. 
the end of the experiment, which is almost about one year, you, uh, you can see about half of the macromolecules still remain, but half of them already converted or released. And this, uh, this uh, 12 days uh, uh, pretreatment has the lowest value uh, by end of the treatment. There is a small molecule uh, ligand pool size. Initially, it's quite high, and uh, toward the end, it's uh, depleted because all those small molecules has, has been associated with ion in the, in, in, in the so-called uh, MAOM. Uh, and the microbial carbon has the very very dynamic transition. Initially, it's low, and then gets very high, and then depleted. Uh, those uh, protected carbon, it's also it's initially very low, and toward the end, it's quite high. Uh, and with 12 days, this protected carbon have the highest amount. So by end of uh, this experiment, we see that most of ion protected carbon was derived from small molecule lignin, lignin carbon. It's only uh, it's about only about three percent of uh, uh, ion protected carbon derived from um, microbial residue. So overall, we we developed a MIFI model and uh, try to explain, uh, try to understand the mechanisms underlying the lignin decomposition. So this MIFI mo the, the modeling uh, analysis indicate that, uh, you know, the first order and then nucleus maintain uh, kinetics they cannot explain the pattern well, but the, the MIFI model with a logistic equation, which indicate the time independent, time dependent growth and the mortality of um, uh, microbial population that community, probably is the main mechanisms to to underline the the the, the steel to release. So nearly half of the lignin carbon um, it's uh, preserved as uh, ion associated organic carbon by end of the experiment. Certainly, this experiment has, has a lot of limitations. It's only lasts for one year, and if longer, whether it's a more microbial uh, microbial um, associated carbon being preserved or not, this issue need to be further explored in the future, and. Um, so, so basically, this uh, data indicate this uh, nucleus maintain kinetics still cannot describe the CO two release from lignin decomposition, at least uh, based on the data we used. So, this is uh, what uh, I have, and I'm happy to take any questions. Okay. Oh, yeah, Johannes. Yeah, you mind come over here? Hi, Ichi. Thanks for your talk. Um, uh, I was wondering, um, I, I didn't quite catch how the lignin was analyzed. You mentioned at some point it was difficult to extract it in the first place. Uh, I imagine that any, any lignin derivatives um, uh, that are absorbing to iron oxides might be difficult to extract or impossible to extract and cupric oxide oxidation is, is is maybe not even the way to go. Um, I yeah. So I, I was wondering, could it be that these are microbial metabolites that are um, you know, uh, remetabolized? I know that Dan is working a lot in 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 uh, the different communities metabolizing, and that you get successive humps of of um, CO two production from ver various products that still bear maybe C thirteen. Uh, um, signals from the original lignin, but are are not lignin anymore. Thanks. Well, it's a great question. Um, I I may not be the best person to answer this question about the lignin. You know, the as as I mentioned, that we only developed the model try to explain 
and the, the one co-author, actually the you know, equal contributor, the Wen, Jun, uh, Wen Jun Huang uh, is the person who made the measurements. And uh, yeah, I, I'm, I have to admit, I am not the right person to answer those questions uh, about uh, measurements. Uh, sorry about that. Oh, we have a question from Zoom. Harold, please unmute yourself. Yes, hi. Um, hi, you see, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Well, thanks for the <clears throat> for the great uh, seminar presentation. Um, so I have a, a comment and, and a question. So um, my comment is that, you know, when we do soil health analyses, which are, you know, a little bit more broad, um, and that includes extracting nutrients, but also with that, we extract iron and manganese. And, and we, um, we very consistently see higher um, iron extracted, and I, I assume that's iron too, um, uh, when we see, you know, when it's like no-till soils or whether organic amendments have added, been added or, or, um, or cover crops. So the, the, the healthier soils also seem to be higher in iron too, which I think would be explained by by your work. Um, uh, that's the way I interpret it. But the the other, uh, like I said, the other uh, element that sort of comes up a lot is manganese, and uh, and so my understanding, and I'm not a soil chemist by any means, is that manganese uh, has sort of similar um, involvement in the decomposition of. Uh, of uh, recalcitrant organic compounds. So, can you can you comment on on the manganese issue? Again, uh, um, Harold, it's a great question, and uh, you know, I I have to admit I'm not soil <laughs> soil chemist or soil scientist, and uh, this is just an opportunity from uh, you know the data sets came from uh, the. Training training course and uh, we develop the model. Yeah, I I have lots to learn about uh, soil chemists. And uh, so, sorry, <laughs> this is the second question I cannot fully answer. Yeah. Thanks anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. Um. Uh, while waiting for others uh, to raise their hand, I have a question in terms of from the modeling side. Um, so, yeah, I, I think the general strategy is to make the model uh, to match the observation, but maybe most of the time we match the observation, but for the wrong mechanism. So how to ensure we get the mechanism representation right, we get the, the structure, model structure right and the parameter, uh, parameters right. Uh, so, uh, and also how to make sure the model not only match the current observation, but also match say, the long-term trend and also variability in a much longer time scale. In, this is a great question. And uh, that's, yeah, this is a very, very um, important question in modeling. Um, it's true if, uh, you know, we can develop a model for one particular data set and the model may fit the, that particular data set well, but it may not represent the, the general me the, the mechanism that can be generalized over time or over the other data sets. And this is a great point. Uh, what we did is, you know, the before, before we formed the working group, I was really concerned about this issue. So I talked with, uh, uh, you know, Dr. Wan Lot and asked her that question, how representative your data sets? And uh, she, she, she's, you know, she assured me that that her data set is relatively new and uh, it's not many of them has been published, but they, uh, she, she basically gave me sense. They did the uh, measurement very rigorously. And uh, they also, uh, you know, Steve Hall published a paper 
in the following year in um, ecology, I think Steve reviewed a variety of uh, uh, data sets. So, so, so this is a very critical issue. Yeah, it's a, it's a all, it's a, it's a very risk or dangerous. Just a random, I mean, the randomly pick one data set to, to develop one model. And uh, we decided to develop a model. It's you know get uh, to get uh, assurance from uh, author. Second is uh, she uh, she also pointed to us that um, lignin decomposition is a major issue uh, in you know soil organic dynamic and uh, the, the data sets. It's a relatively new. Certainly, I you know I I again I don't have the knowledge to make a uh, make a judgment about that. I I trust the, I trust the her judgment, and uh, probably you know many um, some of the audience is may know know this much better than me. And uh, so so and also as I mentioned, this is just the incubation data, um, you know. That the incubation experiment only lasted for one year, and uh, those those conclusion are very tentative and only limited within that 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 uh, experiment under that experimental condition. Okay, yeah, great, thank you. Any other questions from the room? Yes. Uh yeah, Gloria. Yeah. yeah, please. Hi, thank you so much for your presentation. I have a question on one of the graphs. It has swirls on it, and I was wondering if you can explain that really quickly. I've never seen a graph like that. Okay, I'll I'll share the screen again. You may uh, uh, make. Sh Let me see if. Uh... You mean, you mean the model like this? Um, it's towards the beginning. I think maybe uh, Professor Ying Ping Wang that diagram. Oh, wait, wait. It's, it's, uh, Ying Ping Wang's diagram. It, Ying Ping Wang's diagram? Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah I think. Yeah, right there. This one? Yes. Okay. The one on the bottom left. OK. What's the, um, can you, can you ask your question again? Um, can you explain what that shows? I've never seen a graph like that. Okay. Um, I'm not sure how many, uh, if any of you, you know, that have a uh, take ecology, uh, based ecology, like one-on-one in the ecology, usually talked about the prey predator, model this is you know this is um uh locta varotera uh, model prey predator model usually have this pattern so the pattern basically show this uh, on x axis is a uh, my microbial biomass and the y axis is a soil organic carbon when 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 we use nucleus maintenance equation the microbial biomass and the soil organic biomass basically influence the, uh, the rate of decomposition coupled. They made a coupled in such a way that form the oscillative uh, so-called uh, uh, dumping oscill uh, uh, oscillation. So, so this figure is basically replot uh, re the data on the pan, uh, panel, you know, the two panels above. So, so this is oscillative uh, uh, dumping uh, dump, dump, dump oscillations. So that's indicate. I understand that this probably, it's not a very satisfactory explanation. Thank you. And uh, I, once I get back, probably I can explain to you in more detail. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks. Great question. Yeah, we have one more question here. Hello. Um, 
My name is Annette. I'm working with Johannes. Thank you very much for your talk. It was very informative. I have a, um, I have a question <clears throat> concerning the experiments. Were they anaerobic over the whole 360 days? Or does this reaction with iron also occur when you have oxygen in the system? And how realistic is it that in the soil we really have an unorganic uh, degradation of lignin? <laughs> and uh, again, and, uh, it's a great question. And <laughs> again, probably uh, I, I may not know the experiment well enough to answer your question well. And I'm really sorry that, uh, you know, the uh, lignin decomposition, soil chemistry, soil geochemistry, it's, it's not really, uh, I'm still learning, picking up. And uh, I can pass your question to, 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 to co-author, um, uh, Professor Huang, and uh, try to answer your question. Uh, I'm great. sorry. Okay. Yeah. okay, thank you. Can you can see my, my limitation. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could um, could read the papers, but my time is kind of, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I check it. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you. This is uh, my limit. <laughs> my limit of my, the limit of my knowledge. Yeah. Well, this is why you are in SIPS now. So we all learn from each other. We learn from experimentalists and uh, we are modelers. So trying to incorporate uh, the mechanistic understanding to our uh, into our models and uh, also try to use models to uh, help like a better design of, of the experiment. So it's going to be an iterative and two-way process. Uh, any other questions from the room? No? Okay, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Professor Luo. Uh, and we all look forward to your uh, coming back from China and uh, talk to you in person. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. And uh, I'm sorry again. And I'll, I'll see you next week yeah, on campus. This has been a production of Cornell University on the web at cornell.edu.